Hi, my name is Teresa Soto. We're here at the Hammer Museum, here to talk about radical women in Latin American art, 1960 to 1985. And I'm here with Cecilia Fajardo Hill, one of our guest curators. So Cecilia, tell me about this exhibition. What was the impetus? Radical Women is a project that started around 10 years ago. And the whole idea of the exhibition was to highlight women and understand how women have participated and how we understand contemporary art today. And as art historians, we know that women are basically invisible in the books. And Latina and Chicana artists, they are even more invisible. And we wanted somehow to create a new chapter of art history to make people understand how was the contribution of women to the languages of contemporary art. Tell me about that invisibility. Why hadn't we heard about so many of these artists before? Art history has many fields are incredibly patriarchal and women have always been a minority. Basically women have very little chance to be present and the darker your skin, the more marginalized the field is, the more invisible you are. And it's in a completely unfair situation. I think that it's been such a pleasure to have this exhibition here at the Hammer Museum. Can you share a little bit about why um, you brought your ideas to the Hammer? The Hammer Museum is a museum that actually believes in the idea that art leads to some sort of sense of justice, and it has in its core values to promote women artists and people that have been marginalized. So when we presented this project to the Hammer, the Hammer actually immediately accepted it as very much ingrained in its own principles. But basically the big theme of the exhibition is a political body. It's about this idea that through a politicization of the body, you reinscribe it, not only the idea that as a woman, you may define who you are and who, how you identify yourself, represent yourself, but also how you speak politically to the world. And I think what people are finding through this exhibition is that actually it's not only cool, but relevant and avant-garde and transgressive and so forth. Every single aspect that you may define as an interesting idea about contemporary art is already all here. This exhibition is also relevant for men. This concept of gender becomes more fluid through the exhibition that people can express solidarity, not only to the people of their own gender. This idea of a more fluid idea of gender, it is present in the exhibition. Again, Anna Mendieta, when the artist that is doing the performance with her remove his beard and she applies it onto her face, this idea that you can be the other or even Leisure Crack's idea, I and the other, where you actually are covered in masks and then you touch the other person's body until you actually forget that you are a woman or you are a man and explore the other person's body. Pastor Rasuris and her friendship with transgender prostitutes during the time of the dictatorship in Chile, which was forbidden and punishable. This idea of gender is also something that goes beyond the idea of being a woman into a compassionate and a body that actually thinks of the other and the self in a more kind of fluid way. No matter what your gender, no matter what your identity, no matter what the color of your skin is, because I think that so many people can feel a kinship to the idea of embracing your own individual voice. To have these conversations in the galleries where a work like Victoria Santa Cruz's work the ways in which she uses the word negra and it builds and builds and builds to this point where she's fully embracing her own identity. Coming from a place where this notion of being black was first hurled at her as a assault and then fully embracing that identity, I've had incredible conversations about that work. It really is an exhibition to be felt and experienced. Las Tres Marias by Judy Baca is one of the very kind of emblematic pieces in the exhibition because Judy Baca is a very political Chicana artist. These three panels is a pachuca. And pachucas were considered to be not very well seen, even because of the clothes were wide and, you know, unpatriotic because of the waist and so forth. It was completely absurd. And on the left, you have a chola, a truly marginalized woman that comes in and out of jail, has no many opportunities. And the Tres Maria is you. It doesn't matter if you're a man, if you're dark, or if you're white, it doesn't matter. There is a large a piece in the body landscape, which is possibly the most poetic of the themes by Vera Chavez Barcelo from Porto Alegre, imprints of parts of her body, you know, from skin, from pubic hair to lips, and then inviting other people to actually have prints of their body. And she calls it epidermic scape. It's literally a landscape that can go on forever. It could be an infinite landscape. In art history, one of the most taboo things ever was pubic hair. And then 
the most taboo of all bodily fluid is menstrual blood. You have two pieces in the show which celebrate these absolute basic aspects of the female body, but the human body. That is also the basis for having considered women dirty throughout centuries and centuries of history and relegate them to the margins of religions and political action because of that simple biological aspect. I do think that this exhibition right now is incredibly powerful, not just for all of the reasons that we've talked about, also because there's been so many cases in the media about sexual assault, about sexual harassment, about attacks on the female body and also male bodies as well, and how people are, are reacting to both what's happening in the exhibition, but also, I think, in the air. You can't be silent anymore, that it's important to speak out against these things. For the opening of the exhibition, we had El Tendedero, a reenactment of a performance collective act by Monica Meyer. Tendedero is where you hang actually clothes to dry. It asked both female and men if they wanted to talk about issues of harassment, safety in the city of LA. We were worried at the beginning that people wouldn't come up is an anonymous thing, but basically by Saturday, the Tendedero was completely filled. Everybody was writing and everybody had an experience of harassment, which was very powerful. The exhibition ends with the theme of the erotic, which I think is a wonderful theme and people are very free to experience it however they want, but it's about the erotic imagination. It's been said many times and it's been said by artists in the show that in order to have sexual freedom, you have to have political freedom. So it comes hand in hand. On the one hand, you have oppression, you have harassment, you have objectification, you have the stereotyping of women. I mean, in areas like social places with Marsha Swaz, I have the two neighbors who are not beautiful, who are older, and they seem to be gossiping across each other's balconies. There is no grace in that painting, but at the same time, it's completely majestic, this idea of the majesty of the common denominator. You cannot have to celebrate that. Or oh, Beatriz Gonzalez, Wash and Wear Botticelli, where the Venus of Botticelli becomes chabia and also is hanging as a curtain in a really cheap towel bought in a market in Colombia. Again, trying to deconstruct this idea that it has to be an ideal body to have a right to be presented. I think it's really eye-opening for a lot of our audiences and freeing, I think, to see the female body in a way that is uh, unlike anything that they're seeing in the media. And I thank you so much for, for bringing all of that work to our audiences. <laughs>